<laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, I watched four coyotes going up, trotting up, a, which they do all the time, trotting up a dirt road. And they were. this is a dirt road that was made by bulldozers, and all the dirt had been pushed up at the end of the... Um, at the end of this field, it was sort of like a mini mountain range. And I was driving by and saw all four of them going up there. So I, as soon as I got by this mini mountain range, I stopped my car and got out real quick. And I, and I stopped, stood still, waiting for them to, to appear so I could just watch what they were going to do. As I was standing there, I noticed off to my left the, this field of ground squirrels. And they were all out there foraging, right? And I thought, oh, my God, that's what they're doing. They're coming here to... To, to hunt this this field. And so I stood there quietly and waiting for something to happen. And then all of a sudden, one of the ground squirrels uh, looked up and made a mad dash for his hole, stood up on his rear end and barked four times. Bark, 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 bark. Mm -hmm. And when he did that, all the other ground squirrels in the field immediately made a silent mad dash for their holes, mm -hmm. got there, stood up on their and barked four times and looked at the... At the, in the direction the first one was looking, which is where the threat was, right? And they all saw this coyote, and I looked up there, and on top of this little mini mountain range, he was just standing there, and he was he was kind of scratching, and he was looking off in the distance somewhere, like, oh, I don't know you're there. <laughs> and, and he was just so casual, it was cool. He was the distractor. Mm -hmm. And then I started looking for the other three coyotes, finding out what they were going to do. Well, before long, out the other end of this kind of mini mountain range, one of them's creeping really slow and kind of crouched, and he's watching the ground squirrels like mad. Well, they're all busy looking at the one, the decoy. And while ground squirrels can see an enormous uh, range, what they have to see, what they have to see is, uh, is, is movement, movement in order to, uh, and he was creeping. And so he went unnoticed, and, but he was way too far away to be the attack animal because uh, they would have gone down their holes real quick. And so, now I knew he wasn't the attack animal. Actually, what he was was, if you've ever heard of hand, uh, anvil and hammer uh, ambushes, like in the military, he was the anvil. And the, everybody was supposed to be driven toward him uh, if they couldn't get to their hole, and then he would snap them up. So I started looking for the other two, and pretty soon the third one pops up right in the middle of the mountain range, again, too far away to be the attacker. And I'm waiting and waiting for the fourth one, who's obviously going to be the attacker. Now, see, I was really close and right over the top of where these squirrels were. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon it dawns on me that, well, he probably would have come from that direction. I turned around and looked, and he was behind me across on the other side of the road. And he had circled all the way around since the last time I saw him. Mm -hmm. And that's where he was going to be the attack. And he was lit, sitting in the middle... <laughs> In the middle of the of the field over on that side of the road, he was looking at me like, really, dude? <laughs> You're right there where I have to attack from? <laughs> so I interrupted him. But this was a vocalization in this area that uh, that is very clearly ground squirrel saying four, four barks, right? Yeah. It's saying there's a coyote hunting or a group of coyotes hunting. And I'm not sure which because they can distinguish between one hunter and multiple hunters, and I don't know what their sign is for, for, for multiple hunters. It's probably four barks. Mm -hmm. uh, but four barks that are very loud and not, and not made until they get to their hole. If it were a red tail, which hunts ground squirrels like mad, they would be barking while they were moving because they're so quick. Mm -hmm. They come on them so quick. And red it would tail only hawk. be one bark. Yeah. You're talking about a hawk. Yeah. 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 So their bark, their, their warning bark, their alert bark or alarm bark, is only one while it's a red tail, and it's like when they each time they hit the ground, this this bark goes oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm. so it's a, a single bark that's interrupted, uh, and that means the same thing to all the ground squirrels in there and all the other animals. Yeah. Uh, in the area, it means there's a red tail hunting us, and and now and I'm moving, you know. So so how do how do the coyotes communicate to plan this uh, hammer and anvil attack? I don't and, know the answer to that. I think probably I'm just guessing. It's sort of like the lions of any place over in Africa. They, there are some of them that are really good at yeah. this particular kind of action, and some of them that are really good at this other particular mm -hmm. action. And that's real common with wolves. Some of them are the attack, yeah. uh, the actual hit animal, and the others are the trackers, and the others are the, the scoopers, you know, that move them. And do they, do they communicate while they're doing this? Do they have their own barks or anything? How can they do that without no, no, the no. squirrels? No, no, no. They're silent while they're doing it. Yeah. yeah. They are silent. And, uh, and 
every they they watch and they know where because this animal this particular one constantly does this kind of action they yeah. know where they're to expect where their their partners are and which one is going to be doing what and so for a, on a golf course around here could they have multiple coyotes uh, wandering around uh... they could have but they they do single too right yeah they they hunt very often they hunt alone yeah uh, so there could be mul multiple ones mm -hmm. Okay. But Thanks the, parent, the parents school the young ones. That starts yeah. almost immediately because they need to teach them how to hunt. Yeah. Yeah, and and it starts off with playing with each other and all that, but eventually it's usually the mother coyote that's teaching the young ones how to hunt. Huh. And how they fall into their roles depends on what their, you know, it's natural selection, what their skills are and where. And it's yeah. also what position they find themselves when they come upon prey as to where it is, who's closest and all of that. And they adapt to that. So what are the, some of the vocalizations of coyotes? I mean, you hear a howling type. Um, I, mostly yipping. Yeah. Uh, I, one time in my house, uh, I live in a cul-de-sac, and there's a cul-de-sac above me. And so at night, I heard all the coyotes, and we've all heard this. <laughs> and they're all doing it at one time. So I rushed to my window, and I looked out my window. Uh, most of the time, that's futile, but I did. And it was nighttime. And there's a strip about 15 feet wide of grass behind our house that goes the length of all the houses there. And uh, and there's a bank right in back of us. So what they were doing was sitting on the upper, uh, upper cul-de-sac, and they were all yipping. And I saw this one coyote, lone coyote, coming from the opposite direction toward the yipping on this 15-foot, and he was hunting. He was crouched, and he was being real careful, and he was being really silent. Mm -hmm. And what they were trying to do, there's a lot of uh, quail behind us on that, on that embankment. What they were trying to do up above, I'm convinced, I can't prove because I didn't talk to them, uh, <laughs> I'm convinced was chase the quail, panic the quail into running out on this 15-foot strip of grass, and he was the, he was the he attacker, did. right? Oh. And, okay. and that's a vocalization that they used for hunting. Yeah. Um, they they most of the time hunt silently. You know that they're relatively stealth hunters. Yeah. They will. Uh, they they'll mouse out in the field and and yeah. they are quiet and they step very very cautiously and then they look and you can see them. Have you ever seen them on a uh, on a video or something where they leap up in the air and they put their paws down first? Their ears are staked forward. Hmm. They're listening for mouse or bull sounds. Oh. squeaking and rustling in the grass and then when they hear it they they jump up in the air like that and they come down with their paws on the